Uh, what is love if there isn't any service? Uh, you just give a flower, I love you. Uh, it's just sentiment, it's useless. Real love means to give the most valuable service. And of course, here we go again, the most valuable service is education in the process that leads to cessation of all material miseries. In other words, spiritual life. So if someone can give training in this science of Krishna consciousness, this is the best service. That means that's the best kind of love. Uh, that's why we always sign our letters, love, so and so. Uh, because we really want to help people. And that means giving them the knowledge by which all suffering is conquered. Devotional service to Krishna. But someone who is busy plotting and scheming how to become the controller and how to become the number one, they don't have time to serve anybody else. Uh, they are completely egotistical and completely selfish. And that means they can't engage in devotional service. So how are they going to advance? They're going the other way, running as fast as they can the other way. Uh, so all these things, these different kinds of weakness of heart, attachment for useless things, deceitful behavior in politics, uh, envy, and a desire for fame and prestige. Uh, these are, uh, and also laziness. Laziness is a kind of weakness of heart. We discussed that last night a little bit. How contemplating a difficult task is often more difficult than actually doing it. <laughs> because when you are uh, thinking of something with aversion, uh, Aversion is the, other, the opposite of desire. Desire means I want something. Aversion means no, I don't want it. Uh, so when we're contemplating something with aversion, a feeling of aversion, that means we're blocking our energy. Uh, we're holding back. I was like, oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. See, and this makes it three times, five times, ten times as hard to get the thing done. I remember very vividly, I used to study martial arts. And uh, especially at Qigong. And in Qigong, you have to do these different motions very slowly. Uh, so uh, <laughs> my teacher, I remember, she, my first teacher in Qigong was this little old lady, this little old Chinese lady about 82 years old, uh, Mrs. Yi. And uh, she used to come around while we were practicing, you know, so, and she'd say, she'd say, oh, relax, relax, don't work so hard. <laughs> because the, the, the more you tense up, the harder you have to work to move your limbs. Huh? Think about it. The more, the more you hold back while you're doing something, the more force it takes. To, to move. So this is true of any kind of work. That if you, if you hold back, if you tense up, uh, if, you, if you ridge up and, and try to, and you have this feeling of like, oh, I really don't want to do this, then you make the work that you have to do like 10 times as hard. You know? And she used to, she used to say, when you get tired of fighting yourself, <laughs> then you can do Chico. Until then, you're not really doing Chico. See, because you're fighting yourself, you have tension. And then you, you're pushing against that tension. You know, there, it's ego, because we all, we want to think, especially in martial arts, you know, that we're a big, strong, badass martial arts dude, right? So whatever we do in martial arts should take a lot of work, right? Should be really hard work, you know? And you're stretching and pulling, and, right? You know, then afterwards you can go in the shower and feel like, oh yeah, I really worked out, you know? <laughs> this is all ego. You know, you're, it's the only muscle that's getting stronger is your false ego. <laughs> You 
you know. So what, what really, really is uh, uh, beneficial is if you just drop all of that resistance, drop all of that aversion. Huh? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that uh, the one who is on the spiritual platform is free from both desire and aversion. He doesn't want anything, and nor does he not want anything. He simply does his duty. So if you do your duty without desire or aversion, what happens is you, get it, you work more efficiently because there's no resistance. Uh, and you see when people are, have desire, uh, they have kind of an artificial hurry to them. It's like, oh, oh, I'm going to get, you know, they remember, I forget what TV show that was. There was this really funny guy. He used to go, when he got excited, he used to go, ooh, ooh, <laughs> like a monkey. <laughs> you know, and, and this is what people are like, you know, they get all excited about, they want to do this, you know, and then, or if they don't want something, then it's like, oh, they try to put it off as long as possible. And all this does is waste energy either by using too much energy or blocking your own energy. Uh, if you just use the energy that's required for the thing you have to do, and you don't, you don't fight yourself and you don't use too much energy, then that means that the energy you're using is applied in the most efficient way possible. And that means you can do more. And guess what? You won't hurt yourself either. You won't get sick. You won't get tired. Uh, you know, just do your, do your job, do your duty, and, you know, then when you're done, that's it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you're not hurting yourself. So, these are all lessons to be learned from uh, this Hridaya Darbalya. Don't be weak of heart. Don't be lazy. Laziness means aversion. Don't be averse to doing your duty. Simply do it. Uh, if you know your spiritual master has said you have to do this, then just do it. And don't think about it. Don't think, oh, no, oh, no I really don't want to do that. Uh, you know, That's like such a waste of energy. All this posing, all this, it's just dramatics, you know, it's just play acting. It's not even real. You can stop it if you want to, just drop it. And go on and do your duty, do what you know you're supposed to do. And then you'll find, guess what? You're really, really happy because you're not wasting your energy. So these are all, let's see, the, 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 the weakness of the heart is not because the heart is weak. <laughs> the weakness of the heart is because we're tired, because we waste so much energy. And the waste, the wastage exactly, precisely comes from desire and aversion. These two things. These two things have to be given up. They are a complete waste of energy. They don't do us any good at all. So try to follow these instructions. Um, they're for your benefit, and they will help you very much in your advancement in devotional service. Do we have any questions? We have a new guest in our chat, uh, Steve Barney. He's asking, how is this a solution to 2012? Well, we would prefer that you would keep the discussion on topic. Anarthas are things that have to be given up to advance in devotional service. And devotional service is the process of changing our consciousness from material to spiritual. 2012 is one of the uh, most severe material crises that modern civilization has had to face. And the reason it's a problem is because the, the rate of change is speeding up beyond our ability to deal with it. Why is that? Because we're in material consciousness. Material consciousness means we want everything to stay the same. 
We want to keep the status quo the way it is. So the solution to this is to change our consciousness from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. Because spiritual reality is always the same. It's not affected by time. Uh, material world is always affected by time, and there's always going to be changes, and there's always going to be suffering. But in the spiritual world, there's no suffering because there's no time. Uh, so we, by changing our consciousness, we get above time. We become uh, beyond time in eternity, because everything spiritual is eternal. So the method of changing our consciousness is described in this book, Nectar of Devotion. And we've been going over the chapters of this book now for, oh, I don't know, 